folks, this is Ian Steele from the University of Ottawa, Emergency Medicine. In this video, I'm going to tell you how to use the Ottawa ankle rules on your patients. The Ottawa ankle rules were developed through a series of studies involving many thousands of patients, uh, culminating uh, in a multi-center implementation study of 12,000 patients and a systematic review published in 2003, the British Medical Journal incorporated some 27 studies from around uh, the world. The Ottawa ankle rule should be used for adult patients with blunt trauma to the ankle or midfoot from any mechanism. The patient has to be alert and cooperative and to have suffered their injury within the last uh, 10 days. Uh, we separate the ankle into the malleolar zone, uh, which uh, refers to the lateral and medial malleoli, as well as the midfoot zone, which in particular focuses on the navicular and the base of the fifth metatarsal. And we do this because you have the option of ordering an ankle series or a foot series, and rarely do you need to order both. To use this uh, accurately, we recommend that you palpate the entire distal six centimeters of the fibula and the tibia, don't neglect the importance of medial malleolar tendinous, which is less common but is important. And we say that a patient can bear weight uh, even if they are limping. As long as they can transfer weight uh, four times from foot to foot, that's good. And be careful with patients under the age of 18. Clinical judgment should prevail if the examination is unreliable because the patient's uh, too intoxicated to cooperate. They have distracting painful injuries that again make it impossible to assess the ankle. They have diminished sweat sensation in the legs or they have growth swelling which prevents palpation of the malleolar tenderness. These uh, exceptions are quite uncommon. Uh, we encourage you to give written instructions to the patient and encourage them to follow up in five to seven days of pain and ability uh, to walk are not better. Okay, let's take the Ottawa ankle rules to the bedside. This is Jen who has just fallen down a couple stairs, hurt her ankle and hasn't tried to walk on it as yet. So I'm going to uh, evaluate Jennifer for uh, bony tenderness and typically I like to start somewhere apart from where I know it hurts and she's got pain and swelling here on the lateral part of her ankle so there's no point in jumping in and uh, poking her there to start with. So I'm going to start with the proximal fibula, which we know can sometimes be uh, broken also in an ankle injury. And I see that Jennifer has no uh, tenderness there. So we'll move down to the lateral aspect of the foot and ankle. Okay, so going to uh, the lateral side of the ankle and foot, I palpate down the distal six centimeters of the fibula coming right around to the tip of the lateral malleolus and I see that Jennifer has no tenderness there. So uh, let's check the base of the fifth metatarsal which is a very common site of fracture and easily identified by tenderness and in this case there is none. So let's look at the medial side of Jennifer's ankle and foot. Again palpating the distal six centimeters of the posterior edge of the tibia coming around to the tip of the medial malleolus and we see no bony tenderness there. The last place we will check is the navicular bone, which is sometimes fractured and is very easy to palpate. Again, no tenderness. Okay, now that we know that Jennifer has no bony tenderness, I'm going to assess her for ability to bear weight. So Jennifer, would you mind stepping down onto the floor and then I'd like to take a total of four steps or more and because Jennifer can do that, even if she's got a little limp, she definitely passes the walk test. Okay, so we've seen that Jennifer has no bone tenderness and she's able to bear weight. So we can say that she's auto ankle rule negative and definitely has no significant fractures of her ankle or her midfoot. And that means no x-rays are required and Jen can go home now. Bye Jen.